Okay. This is a second test. Okay, the first test, what we've done is we've made sure that <coughs> we have got contacts, that our probe card is making contact on all the pads, on all the input pins. The output pins we haven't checked yet, but we know they're not shorted. Okay, and the third type of pins, you've got input, output, and power pins. Your power and ground pins, we haven't checked yet. Okay, in the test I worked on, there were two types of ways of creating voltages. You have something called uh, VI, which is a per you can parametric, you can say, I want to create a current source <coughs> of one milliamp out of this pin. So you can create a current source on a pin. <coughs> you can create a voltage on what's called a, a DDPS, which is your power supply, device power supply, and program of device power supply and the voltage. Okay, so in general, what one would do is one would first run open shorts. Open shorts will run, open shorts will pass. Once again, rule number one, not to destroy your test equipment. Once open shorts is passed, you can run VCC, VCC ground shorts. Okay, VCC ground shorts, <coughs> how was it done? B BKM, best known method within Intel, was to create, to create a current <coughs> On, a, on the VCC pin to ground and to use the feedback the the feedback pins of uh, the comparator to make sure that you're in a in a known voltage we are basically measuring the resistance <coughs> if your VCC ground was shorted you would have a, you'd have no voltage, you'd be at zero. Okay, that's why VCC ground was, okay. I'm now gonna speak about the last program change, which, which was done at uh, Fab 8. I think it was done by myself in conjunction with a get with a fellow fire zabugosh he slid intel okay there was a project there was a pro there was uh <coughs> there was a product which had a nickname called q gum which was on process 653 it was one of the devices that i think if my memory corrects me Going back 15 years, it was a device made for Qualcomm. It was not an Intel device. Okay. The way the testers that I worked on worked was you had 64 pins became a quadrant. Four, four quadrants gave you 256 pins, the maximum configuration for a tester. This particular product had 128 pins. Had 128 pins, one including pin zero, one more than two quadrants. Now, if one goes back to 2004, 
this particular product was I or had a had a had a relatively large order for Qualcomm. I think it was Qualcomm, where they'd have a few lots per week. It was basically the only lots which were made on that process 653. Okay, so. And at that point in time, we were limited in capacity because we had cannibalized our testers down to 128 pins. Some of the testers had been cannibalized down in order to save money. Dropped in configuration. So what happened was we were very constrained on where we could run this particular product. This product could could only run on two testers instead of uh, ten testers. So, how did how did okay okay? So to go back to the way the product was, the product we had one hundred between zero and one twenty seven <coughs> uh, pins. Pin 0 and pin 127 were the pins of the chip. Pin 128, pin 128 was the pin which was used for, for VCC shorts testing. It was connected to the, to the, <coughs> to an internal ring. And that internal ring was then used for creating the VCC shorts test. Okay. The factory was constrained. The factory was constrained. I can say it was, if I'm cor thinking correctly, it's the second half of 2003. The second half of 2003, 17 years ago, the cap factory was constrained, and constrained in a way that you couldn't, that we didn't have enough. We had we had to uh, do somersaults in the air to be able to run these te run these lots <coughs> on the testers. What's more is as the fab would only send out these lots right at the end of the week and every week we would have to have a hard time getting these uh, the, this product to run okay history okay so what did i do i decided to change the test program and to change the test program instead of using a pin instead of using a pin to create a current and measure a voltage I took it from VCC with current limiting A far less elegant way of doing things, but in my humble opinion, it allowed the factory to close a month earlier because we would have piled up these these lots, and we would have at the end of the when the when the when the fab closed, we would have had to run the lots one after each other there was no ways that we could or that we would be able to have run them the way they were okay <clears throat> it goes down to be the last engineering change of a test program for that intel fab 8 ever did
Okay, it was after everything had been frozen. Okay, and something that I did, I never even got, I ne was never even thanked for it. Just taken for example, just take it taken for granted. Okay. Okay, that's the <coughs> that's the second test. So to go over to recap, <coughs> we have an unknown. We have an unknown device that we have that we have that we have put connected with a probe card. The unknown device which is connected with the probe card, we now know that we if it's if we've passed these two all our pins are touching the pro touching the silicon pads and we know that we haven't got a short any other pins are shorted to ground we also know that we don't have a vcc to ground short <coughs> at this point in time there is no real danger in applying to the test equipment by applying power to the chip. Okay, up until now, all the tests are done with the chip powered down. <coughs> the chip can be now powered up and we can start by doing the other tests. Okay, the other tests are done with the tip of the chip with the with the with the chip powered up i'm gonna go through some of the other tests these two tests are the first two tests they have to be the that they have to pass before you can go any further okay thank you for your time i will be continuing with The, the, some more types of tests. What is quiescent current? What is functional? VOL. I'm going to go through basically the next couple of tests. <coughs>